your last record had like I think like a lot of the same themes mm -hmm. as this one. So how would you think it, it's different? I think it's different. And uh, our last record was called The Husky Tenor, and it came out in 2006. I think and we had worked on it for a long time before that. We were I, I'd been writing it since 2004, and it finally was done in 2006. <laughs> For the next two years after that, um, we played constantly. We went on tour constantly. We played probably 300 shows in those two years, you know, doing it um, just all the time. Really made it about what we were actually doing. Took it from being uh, maybe a hobby or something to kill time to actually sort of centering everything else around it and really taking it seriously. Um, Along the way, we started to pick up more and more people. Uh, the way this band works is, you know, all my friends that know how to play instruments, they, you know, teach them these songs. And if they can come with me on tour, then they do. If not, I played shows just like this by myself. We've played as a three piece, and we played just last summer, we went on tour as 16 of us. You know. So whoever wants to come, try not, to, we never tell anybody that they can't, never talk anybody into doing it. Trying to keep it the only thing in my life and hopefully I can do that for my friends too the only thing in my life that you know where there really aren't rules or expectations and stuff like that so but we had been doing this for uh, for a while and it was starting to be to where people were starting to kind of care you know and um, I didn't want the new one I wanted to be too cool then to, then to think about that you know what I mean I wanted to be too cool for that to matter to just say oh I don't care that People were actually listening now. It was too hard to do. It was too hard to do. So I thought about it, and that was a big reason for the title of it, for it to be still at war, that we're still at war, that it's hopefully not redundant and just talking about the same things that the Husky Tenor did. But it is saying that those problems aren't solved. You know what I mean? It's supposed to be that I think the, the Husky Tenor doesn't get into putting it against. The, the bigger world, you know, the, the bigger the bigger picture, and that's what this one does. A bigger band, right? There's, it was recorded live too, and there's 19 of us playing on it, and uh, so it's a bigger band, bigger arrangements, and it was supposed to be a bigger scale to a bigger scale. It, yeah, I, I I agree. You know, it does talk about a lot of the same things, but um, I wanted to, I wanted to feel like we were stepping it up instead of just. You know, being complacent with where I was. I think that's the big one. Thanks. Where did you record the um, CD at? We recorded the CD at 709. It's, uh, it's, it used to be the J. Puma Banana Factory. Um, <laughs> it's a warehouse, you know, it's this big empty concrete warehouse. Obviously, on the record, you can hear all that reverb and it bounces back and forth on concrete walls. That's really what it sounded like in there. It was, we did it before. 709 opened up officially as a venue, so there weren't there were like frames of the gallery walls that we put up. Just recorded right in the middle. There was no heat. It's really cold. Well, that was when we were writing it. It wasn't too cold. Um, how did you get on the record label, uh, Crafty Dan? Yeah, uh, Crafty Records. We ran into first time I met Dan, the guy that does Crafty Records, was in. Charlotte, North Carolina. We played a show in Charlotte, North Carolina, and there was another guy that's on Crafty Records named Brooke Pride more. He was playing a show, and Dan was with him, and we played a show together, and we kind of got to be friends. And we just, it was just like that. We keep, we would keep running into each other at different shows. And then the last time, one of the last times I played in New York City, that's where Crafty Records is, and he came to the show. Hey, you guys only should let me put out your record. Blah, blah. And at that time, we had put out the last album by ourselves. Uh, we paid for it ourselves. We made a thousand copies of it, and they were all gone. And I knew that we had to make a thousand more, plus try to make a new one. And we didn't have the money to do that. We didn't want to have to do that. So when Dan said, I'll put out, your, I'll put out the last one if you let me put out the new one, it seemed like a good, good idea. This way, the, the, the old one still exists. And, and he's a cool guy. Um, is there any reason to have recording your CD live? Yeah, absolutely. We had been, there's a record, the record before <coughs> this one was called The Husky Tenor. And we recorded it like, uh, 
a standard record, you know, layered everything, tracked it, mixed it. It wasn't done live, it was just overdubs and stuff like that. And for the next two years after that record was out, we toured around. We probably played about 300 shows in those two years. And we went on the East Coast, we went as far west as like Chicago, and just kept making these loops over and over. Um, and along the way, we got to be pretty tight as, as a band and as a group of people that were pretty dedicated to the same idea. And it seemed like the best way to get that point across was to record it live, to make it sound like it does when we play live, that we turn very much into a band that exists more live you know, than anything else. Um, we want to do it like that. We also want to do it because that idea of like, you know, personal, individual significance or whatever that can that can go into like uh, a group kind of thing too. You know, this little community that's become this band, and we wanted that to be represented in full as well. We recorded it at seven oh nine. This piece. Did you um, record it all at once, like nonstop, or was it like split up? Yeah, we would 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 set up. Uh, for each song individually, like if we knew that there was a saw, oh, you can add that to the list, singing saw. <laughs> if there was a saw, then we put a microphone over close to Josh while he's playing the saw. Yeah. And um, we'd set up and do it that way, and then just play, like the singing, everything was, was live. Um, Mike didn't put it in and then tried to mix it later, but basically that's really what it sounded like. Yeah. Sometimes you can't hear the words, but I mean, it's going to be hard to hear. I like to look back there. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, and um, you know, and we would play it, and if we got through it and said, "Yeah, that felt pretty good," then we would move on to the next song and stuff. And if there was a blatant screw up, then we'd say, oh, "We're gonna have to do that over." But then we left a lot of them in there too. So. <laughs>